heavens and his glory above the nations. I said the Lord is high above the heavens and his glory above the nations. Give God the highest praise, acknowledge him always, and let all the people say, Halle, halle, hallelujah. Say, halle, halle, hallelujah. Oh, halle, halle, hallelujah. Say, halle, halle, hallelujah. The Lord is high above the heavens, and his glory above the nations. I said the Lord is high above the heavens, and his glory above the nations. Give God the highest praise, acknowledge him always, and let all the people say, Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Say, Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Say, Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Halle, halle, hallelujah. One more time. The Lord is high above the heavens and his glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens and his glory above the nations. Give God the highest praise. Acknowledge him always and let all the people say, Halle, halle, hallelujah. Halle, halle, hallelujah. Say, halle, halle, hallelujah. Oh, halle, halle, hallelujah. Now listen. Say, halle, hallelujah. Halle, hallelujah. Say, if you really love the Lord, say yes, yes. So yes. And if the Lord has ever done anything for you, say yes, oh yes, say hallelujah, say hallelujah, say if you really love the Lord, say yes, oh yes, and if the Lord has done good things for you, then say yes. Good morning, St. James. I'm Reverend Sekou Brown, and I will be leading us to the throne of grace for this morning's invocation. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Let us close our heads and bow our eyes and look to the Lord in prayer. O oh, merciful and gracious God, as we look past this, these, this week, we saw a mighty storm come through our area, and yet, O oh God, in reminding us that you are our rock in storms, you are the calm in the midst of the storm, and you are our peace. So we come right now, O oh God, asking you again for your Holy Spirit, asking that your Holy Spirit would come into this virtual space and consecrate it and equip it for worship. 
as we congregate together in this virtual space, we ask that your Holy Spirit would touch us all, all those that will view this, all those that will participate, beginning with the pastor as he brings to preach word and words of wisdom, as those that will sing in this or play music in this or say the scriptures or pray or any way perform a task in this worship experience. We pray that your Holy Spirit would envelop them and quicken them and allow our worship to worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, oh Heavenly Father, we ask that you would bless those that are sick in our congregation, that your Holy Spirit would touch them where they are and resurrect them to a new, to their to a health and to strength. We pray, O oh Heavenly Father, for those that are incarcerated, that your Holy Spirit would go where they are and free their mind, even their body, even though their body may be incarcerated. We pray, O oh Heavenly Father, that all those that are calling on you and in need of your touch, that your Holy Spirit would go there and touch them in a form that will help them through their storm. We pray, O oh Heavenly Father, that your Holy Spirit will equip us for the journey that goes after this service, that we might bring this message that you furnished us with into this dying world. Prepare, be careful, give you all the honor and all the praise. And it's in the matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray and praise. Amen. Good morning, St. James. I will be reading Psalms 130, verses 1 through 8 in the New Living Translation. From the depths of despair, O Lord, I call for your help. Hear my cry, O Lord. Pay attention to my prayer. Lord, if you kept a record of our sins, who, O Lord, could ever survive? But you offer forgiveness that we might learn to fear you. I am counting on the Lord. Yes, I am counting on him. I have put my hope in his word. I long for the Lord more than centuries long for the dawn. Yes, more than centuries long for the dawn. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is unfailing love. His redemption overflows. He himself will redeem Israel from every kind of sin. I have read Psalm 130, verses 1 through 8. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word.
be the glory for the great things that he has done. Good morning and welcome to St. James African Methodist Episcopal Church virtual worship service. We're glad that you joined us this day. And remember, as always, Jesus is our salvation. We thank him for leading us through another week's journey and bringing us together this morning for worship. I'm grateful to our officers, um, members, friends, ministerial team, and you for your prayers and support of this ministry. And uh, to those who are standing in need of prayer, uh, know the St. James Prayer Ministry is praying for you. Uh, for those who are grieving, hurting, uh, uh, ill, uh, and uh, in need of health and healing, know that St. James is praying for you. And to um, uh, our media team, worship team, production team, thank you for the work that you have done and are doing in our worship service this day. To uh, the class of 2021, again, hallelujah and congratulations. And to all the students, uh, to God be the glory for the things that he's done through and with and for you and your family during this very difficult time during this pandemic and school year. And uh, we want to uh, say hallelujah for all those who are celebrating birthdays and other significant events in your life this week in the life of your family. As we prepare to go further into worship, I ask that you would consider us as you're making out your offerings. Use our online system uh, so that you might uh, uh, be able to continue to do what you've done, and that is support this ministry financially. Now let us go further to worship in Jesus' name. Speak. 
you're going to leave Oh, my brother, my sister, I speak life You are the head and not the tail You will be there I speak life Don't give up Praise God for that selection. Let us now continue in this worship moment by turning our attention to uh, the Word of God. I'll be sharing with you from the Old Testament book of Psalm 16, verses 7 through 11. Psalm 16, verses 7 through 11. Now I'll be reading from God's Word. Uh, Paraphrase and translation. I will praise the Lord who advises me. My conscience warns me at night. I will always keep the Lord in front of me. When he is by my side, I cannot be moved. That is why my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body rests securely because you do not abandon my soul to the grave or allow my Holy One to see decay. You make the path of life known to me. Complete joy is in your presence. Pleasures are by your side forevermore. Amen and amen. Amen. I ask your prayers as I come to share with you inspirations under the title, What Does Love Do? What Does Love Do? Let us pray. Lord, our God, we thank you for this moment. Thank you for the presence and movement of your spirit. We thank you for these that have joined us in this spiritual worship service. We pray now, Lord, that you will speak to us, give voice to your word, inspiration to these, your people, and strength to the servant, that you may be glorified, your kingdom advance, and your name glorified. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen, amen, and amen. What does love do in trying times? What does love do in trying times? As I search for an answer to this question, I came upon this statement. Love is like a resting place, a shelter from the storm. It exists to give you comfort. It's there to keep you warm. And in those times of trouble, when you are most alone, the memory of love will bring you home. Are you experiencing trying times? Although the pandemic is now being managed and life to some degree throughout this country is getting better. Yet, experiencing trying times continue to be a way of life. In fact, as I get older, I believe the earlier we learn how to deal with trying times, the better and more successful we can be. I also believe all young children should be taught how to deal with trying times. Shielding our children from trying times is instinctive. However, teaching them 
how to deal with trying times is equally necessary. Let's learn to equip ourselves and those we love so they can deal with life as it is while working to make life better for themselves, for their family, friends, and others. To that end, this is why the Bible and faith in Christ, faith in God, should be introduced, learned, and consistently worked through our lives and the lives of our children. The books of Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, the parables of Jesus, and the early chapters of Genesis are critically important in the establishment of our foundation for living life and trying in these trying times, in this trying world. Are you experiencing trying times? In Psalm 16, David writes about being in a good place. A good place emotionally, a good place spiritually, socially, a good place physically. Because of his relationship with God and the love that God shares upon him. David is in a good place, not because he hasn't had any trying times. In fact, David experienced a lot of trying times in his life. In his lifetime, David faced murderous attacks from animals and human beings alike. David faced threats in his life in the wilderness and in the streets of cities. David faced threats from family and foes. Yes, threats within and threats without. David faced severe opposition and adversity. Yet, no matter what David faced, his trust in God was anchored, was anchored in a resolute reliance, anchored in a confident faith. His trust in God was anchored in the God of love. Even in the face of life-threatening ordeals, David would find time. He would find a place while serving God to rejoice and give God great praise. How about you? Perhaps this is why David is said to be the apple of God's eye. This 16th Psalm is a statement of David's confident faith Hope for the faithful and prophecies of the Messiah's victory of life over death, light over darkness. If you are experiencing trend, if you are experiencing some trying times, I encourage you to read and to study Psalm 16. This psalm can be summarized in that while the facing of mounting adversity, David rejoices in the Lord, recalls the blessings he received, believes in a loving God, and declares the glory of the Messiah and his defeat of darkness and death. In this psalm, David invokes trust Trust in the Lord's power to love and to keep him. David invokes this trust. David ponders the contrast of saints and sinners. David proclaims the Lord's portion given to him. And David praises the Lord for his provisions, presence, promises, and pleasures assured at the end of the path of life. No matter how life may be, no matter how life may end. Like David, all believers ought to fix their hope and faith on a God 
of safe refuge, on the God of love and truth, and on the God who secured the path of life, eternal life. Even in trying times, they would not be shaken. What does love do in trying times? The God of love preserves us a resting place. The, 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 the God of love preserves a shelter from the storm. The God of love comforts and warms us and keeps us. The God of love gives us strength to keep on going on. And as some people say, keep on keeping on. Even in those times of trouble, when we may feel like we're all alone, the God of love brings us home where faith, hope, and love abides. What does love do in trying times? Only as much as we are willing to allow God to do in and through us as he works the works of love in us. But the trouble for some of us is this. We don't keep trying in trying times. But don't stop trying. Don't stop trying to do better. Don't stop trying to follow the Lord. Don't stop trying to know and learn more about the Lord. Don't stop trying to face your troubles and your trials and your tribulations. Don't stop trying to overcome your tragedies and trials. Continue to do better and try better. Why? Because there's a God of love, the Lord of all, the great I am, is standing with and working for and through you as you allow him to. Oh, keep trying, keep pushing, keep reaching out for the God of love. The God of our salvation. Oh, and beloved, be like David in this Psalm, Psalm 16. Don't give in, don't give up, don't give out. Don't give over to doubt and to defeat. But look up, look up and take hold of hope, faith, and love in Christ. And together we can, as a songwriter wrote, saying in our hearts these words. Souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He is the master of the seas. Billows will obey. He is your savior. Want to be, be saved today. Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Be saved today. What does love do in trying times? It lifts us. It saves us. It provides for us. It comforts us. It strengthens us. It warms us. It keeps us. It leads us to a place of love. Why not let the God of our salvation take your hand and lead you to that place beyond this world's help to the God of salvation. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father and our God, we thank you for this time of worship together. Oh Lord, we thank you for the movement of your spirit. We thank you for your word. And we're asking now, Lord, that if there is one that is listening, if there's one that is watching, if there's one in worship with us this day that has not taken hold of the salvation of Jesus Christ, if there's one among us that feels like giving in, throwing in the towel, giving up, we pray that they will join us in the prayer of salvation. 
where we simply acknowledge that we need God and confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ is the God of our salvation. He is the Son of God. He is our Savior, our Redeemer. And give ourselves over to Him. And receive salvation. Receive the Spirit of Christ. And walk in that which God has prepared for you. In His glory. In His power. Oh God, we ask that there's one that is looking to connect with us in a fuller way that they would call our church line 410-939-2267 or send us a message through Facebook through this broadcast. Well, God, we pray for those that are with us in this worship service and those of our congregation circles of family and friends and beyond. We pray, oh God, for those who are grieving. We pray, oh God, for those who are standing in need of health and healing. We pray, oh God, for this church family, St. James. We pray, oh God, for members of our church, Audrey Brown and Paul and Carmen Kearney. We pray for Elaine Pearson, Marie Brown, Ethel Walker, uh, Hawkins, Ethel Hawkins. We pray for Caldonia Henry and Polly Hathaway, Theryl Tilden. We pray, oh God, for families. We pray, oh God, for Audrey Brown and Michelle Brown, Brother and Sister Francis and their friends. We pray for all those who stand in need in this hour. May your will be done in us and through us and for us, O oh God. In the matchless and powerful name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Let us prepare for the receiving of the benediction. And let me remind you that we are gathering in the Happy Grace Community Center parking lot this day at 1.30 to celebrate communion in a drive through fashion today. Come join us. Now may the grace of God, the love of the Father, the joy of Jesus, sweet and powerful communion of the Holy Ghost rest, ruin, and abide in each of our lives, seeing us all through another week's journey. The Redeemer, Lord, sing together and say together, Amen, Amen, and Amen. What does love do in trying times? It keeps us, preserves us, and sees us through. As God did with David, God can do with me and you too. God be with you. God walk with you this week.